Welcome to the RP Show with me, Steve Johnson. And me, the TBF Maniac. Join us as we share hints, tips and insights of how to live an awesome life with retinitis pigmentosa. And welcome back to the RP Show. And uh, we got episode two right now. Wasn't that last episode like crazy? Yeah, pretty good. RP Fest. It's good to get oh out there. Gosh. Show everybody what went down. Um, good way to kick off a uh, new season yeah, was, of the RP show. Was, oh, absolutely. I mean, that's a that's as we what we call it a heavy hitter, you know, <laughs> like come out coming out strong. But what are we doing this week though? Is the real question. Well, this week, really useful episode, hopefully for everybody out there who's considering a cane, and more specifically, considering a cane tip. So this week. We bring to you the RP community Battle of the Cane Tips. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are we doing this battle of the tips, Steve? Okay, here it is. So, for the agenda, what we're going to do, we're going to take the six most popular cane tips on the market. You and I are going to go off out of the studio and put these tips through their paces, through a series of tests, come back, discuss it, and see which one we believe is the ultimate cane tip. So I was thinking we need to test some real-world examples. We need to test usability, durability, yeah. Yeah. portability, usefulness, right. jabbiness. Said, you said, yeah, ja- ja- yeah. <laughs> well, we all know how we feel about jabbiness. <laughs> <laughs> We tend to do things a little bit different around here. So <laughs> we've got the Omnisense cane tip, the rover wheel, the Dakota disc, marshmallow, and the ball tip. Okay, Mike, so we've left the studio. We have come outside to do our field test, and in true British style, it's absolutely p- down with rain <laughs> and we're going to do a field test so we're going to check we're going to test um usability jabability we're going to try it on grass and we're going to try it on gravel and we're going to try it on just normal sidewalks and we'll test each cane and see how we go to make this a completely scientific test we were going to need a circuit or a course so we marked out these trees and this became our test track for the grass test and the first weapon of choice down the triple tree grass circuit is no it's not a metal detector it's not a flying saucer it is the Dakota disc designed for snow and sand and kindly provided to us free of charge by Ambutex sweet left and right sweet left and right come on faster faster if he gets stuck he gets stuck up it's the ambutech rover wheel designed for rough terrain And the final contender down the grass course is the Omnisense cane tip. As the name suggests, this is an omnidirectional set of wheels that move in all directions. And three, two, one, begin.
Next up, we decided to test something a little more common, like a typical path, just like a normal gravel path you might see in a park or down the side of a canal. We tested the Omnisense wheel on the gravel, we tested the Rover wheel and the ball, just to see how they perform on a typical gravel track. Next up, the jabby test. You wouldn't find it with a coat of this, which take from that what you If would. I said you, yeah, close yeah. You close your eyes, go find it, you know, go find that grid somewhere, Steve. You do like nope, it's just be all the same. Sorry? It's a really long story, but we're testing some <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Well, so it was at this point we were interrupted by a member of the public for what probably looked like some really strange suspicious activity do not conduct a jabbiness test with in a public. dakota disc which <laughs> looks like a metal detector in front of somebody's house <laughs> yeah I, I, basically i think a member of the public thought we were testing for like radiation or um or something um so that was uh that, that was a really funny moment and quite no, I, just, I wish i kept recording i was like disappointed i didn't actually continue to record because it was hilarious yeah. for her to be like is that a metal detector? <laughs> yeah, we should have. Um, we, should have kept it. we should have kept that rolling, uh, but we panicked and stopped because we were being challenged by a member of the public. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. but all was well. All was well. Now back to the jabbiness test. So the crack we're using for the jab test is about ten mil or maybe a quarter of an inch. It's not quite as high as my foot, just for context. That's what we've been using to do the jab test. Battle one. Marshmallow versus ball fight ball wins battle two omnisense versus ball fight omnisense wins battle three omnisense versus Rover wheel fight. I would say that the wheel is handling this better because you can hear it. Can you hear that? That little kind of that's hitting it. Whereas this one, nice and yeah. Rover wheel wins. Battle four. Rover wheel versus Dakota disc. Fight. Go ahead. <laughs> and the, and winner, the winner, the Dakota, the Dakota disc. disc. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, it was actually really surprising. I couldn't believe how well it slid across that um, that crack in the pavement. Yeah, I know it's that was a uh, it was effortless. Yeah, it oh. was. Uh, one thing I was going to mention though. Um, Mike and myself were discussing when we did the jabbiness test is jabbiness a bad thing we've always thought it is because it's annoying when your cane gets jammed or jabs you however one thing that occurred to Mike and I when we were doing this test is the the disc glided so effortlessly over those cracks yeah. you might actually yeah. trip on them because you wouldn't be alerted to it because it was zero there's no feedback yeah nothing no, yeah was, nothing yeah like Kind of so it was yeah. amazing. Um, so it wouldn't jab you, um, but then you might not notice these little tiny crevices. But then, do you really want to notice them little tiny crevices and have your cane jab every five seconds? I guess it's a, a personal preference, maybe. Well, that leads us nicely on to the second part, wasn't it? So we've done our field testing. We, yep, did, we, our, are, uh, we yep. did our jabbiness. We've done um, different terrain, gravel, grass, all that stuff. But we wanted to take it one step further and look at the durability portability and again have that real world element so mike let's get back to the testing area back we go. next up durability my first impressions of the omnisense cane tip when i first received it was i had no faith in its durability whatsoever these wheels that you can see here they're not really wheels that is just a plastic spindle with a plastic disc on it and it doesn't spin particularly well 
and they don't feel particularly robust. None of these wheels are rubber or silicon. It's just fairly cheap feeling plastic and it doesn't feel like it's going to last too long. Now the ball tip, as you can see, does not wear particularly too well. Uh, this one is about three months old. It's really close to needing to be replaced. I'm going to say you get about three to four months out of them. Okay, the Dakota disc is made out of really thin, hollow plastic. It doesn't seem like it would last too long if you were using it on any surface that it's not intended for. Obviously, it's intended for snow, sand, and grass. And on those surfaces, it would probably be fine. But if you used it on anything else, I think this would wear out pretty quickly. Next up, we have the rover wheel, which really is made very well tire is it's a very impressive uh material and i feel if you keep the burnouts down to a minimum you're gonna get a lot of life out of it and uh just overall impressive it spins really well amazing actually amazingly well okay next up we have the classic marshmallow tip these things are made to be indestructible they're made out of really hard solid pl solid plastic and don't show much signs of wear and tear. However, they do have ball bearings inside, which over time can get full of dirt, grease and grime and can start to seize up. But generally, these last for many, many years. Now, when it comes to durability, the clear winner is the pencil tip because there's basically no moving parts. It doesn't make a lot of contact with the ground. So, there you go. Okay, next up, portability. In first place has to absolutely be the trusty ID cane. It packs down really, really small. It's only like that thick, as you can see here, and it's dead easy to pack up and put on the table. So everybody knows that. But if you're not using an ID cane and you're using some of the proper cane tips or specialist cane tips, let's do, Mike, a real world test. We'll set up a table as if we're gonna sit at a restaurant or a bar or whatever, and we'll get each cane tip out and put it on a table with some typical condiments and we'll take it from there. What do you think? Sounds good. All right. Let's do it. Let's relocate to our fake restaurant. Good evening, gentlemen. A table for two, please. Uh, yes, please. Okay, table six. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right, portability then. So, if this was real life, we would fold our canes up normally. Mine, yeah, mine's folded and up. You might put it on the table, which is frowned upon because it's got dog poop on it and <laughs> other stuff. But let's. Mm, now, this is quite massive to put on the table. Well, if you were going to, yeah. And like, if that was covered in poo and stuff like that, you'd be a bit like, oh, well, self conscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where would we put this? Now, I suppose you could put it on the ground or you might want to put it on the lap. Something like that. Best you like it, yeah. But for portability, I'm thinking the Dakota nice. disc is yeah. not very portable <laughs> in a restaurant. No. I would say that is the lowest scoring one. Next up would be, I guess, the wheel. Right, so now, yeah. if you go with the wheel and you're coming in, you sat down at the restaurant, what do you think? That's, that's way more doable, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, in a way, you know, it's funny, it doesn't actually really hit the table. I mean, if you have your position right, you actually, it's flat, so it's actually not, wouldn't be necessarily frowned upon. No. Because if you keep it like this, it's actually not even on the table. And there's more chance, I think, of that maybe going in your bag, or if you had a handbag or yeah. a man bag, Absolutely. or maybe a huge pocket, or if yeah. you're just going to put that on your lap while you're eating, or yeah, this is easy. Pocket on the chair, you could do that. Totally. So, I'd so, say it's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah, I'd say definitely uh, portability is it's far better than. <laughs> Decoded disc. Alright. Okay. Okay then. So you walk into the restaurant, get the uh, cane down. What have you got on now? You've got the, I've got the ball. The classic ball. Yep. I've got with the Omnisense. Now that is again 
very similar. You could put that down on the table. Yeah, that's Again, there's the whole grossing people out because it's been on the ground, but it's nice and small, it's compact. The only thing I would say with this one is if you were going to put that now, you know, no. in a jacket pocket, like, yes, or cause... in a uh, handbag, it does it's a bit awkward. Have quite high profile, yeah. so it would be quite hard. Right. Now, I think this is the ultimate portability. This is technically cheating because I've got an ID cane. <laughs> but I will always use an ID cane if I'm going on a night out, I'm going to bars and clubs, and it's really, really busy because, number one, it's easier around chairs and tables because the cane is too long and it gets in the way of people's feet, and you can't really use it in there anyway, so I'm long holding on to someone. And in terms of portability, I mean, look at that. It is super That's, small, yeah, really skinny. You could put that anywhere, no one would even notice it. And because it's so small, so I will normally just shove that in my yeah. pocket, so I can shove it in my pocket, yeah, right there. and then it's out of the way, and I'm good to go. Yeah. Oh, I better drink these G&Ts, dude. Better. Cheers. Cheers, and they're going to drink themselves. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that concludes all of our tests. We've checked everything out that we could on all these different tips and their strengths and their weaknesses and all that. So, Steve, who's the winner? I know everyone wants to know. Okay, here it is. The Battle of the Tips 2023, hosted by the RP Show. Winner is... None of them. We couldn't decide. <laughs> what? <laughs> So we came to the conclusion that it's possibly a case of horses for courses, a bit like buying a jacket or a coat. You don't wear a tux up a mountain and you don't wear a mountain winter coat to a wedding. So Mike and I discussed this at length when we were trying to pick a winner and we decided really these sort of two categories that we could, we could right. boil it down to. We've got urban tips that you would use in an everyday setting if you're going into the city, if you're going to work, if you're going to the mall, shopping, whatever. Then we've got specialist tips, which Mike and I said, you know, if you're going out at the weekend and you're going camping and you're going to be on grass and in fields most of the time, it probably is worth getting one of these specialist tips because me and Mike were super impressed, wasn't we? Oh, yeah, I know. Absolutely impressed. They, like you said, they surprised you. Yeah. So, yeah, really impressive. good. Yeah. Really, really good. So, um. So. And the Ambitech ones, it's just worth talking about price, Mike. The, the, the Ambitech ones, I think, are really good value. They're not expensive, yeah. are they? If you order from their site, like we ran it, we were going through their website, and uh, it ranges from like 10, 15 bucks. That, I know. mean, well, first of all, a huge thank you to the guys at Ambitech for sending yep. us um, those thank you so much. tips. Um, obviously, I purchased the Omnisense cane tip myself, um, yep. and I've been using that for six months. And, and what do you think of that one, though? What was your feeling on that in terms of how much you paid for it? I I I wouldn't recommend it. I, I would say it is far too expensive. Me personally, at the time, so you know, I'm not saying this how much it is now, but I had to pay, <laughs> including shipping, it worked out at around sixty pounds UK. So that's like probably seventy like, something, like seventy five, eighty bucks, like right somewhere. Seventy five, eighty bucks. You could buy every single cane tip in our video. From Ambitech for less than and, that. Yeah, yeah. And a cane, probably. <laughs> and probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, my, my summary of the Omnisense is, you know, it, it, well, because it looks on the pictures and on the videos, it looks like it's got all these fancy wheels on it. It looks like it's going to be silky smooth and spin really well, but it's just cheap plastic and it doesn't move that well. Now, don't get me wrong, it's far superior to a marshmallow tip. If you're using a marshmallow tip and you go from that to that, you're going to think it's amazing. But, if you're going to go from a ball tip, like what you predominantly use, to yeah. Omnisense, it's not worth all that extra cash. It's no. not that much right. better. You know, it's probably about the same. And you can get you can get a ball tip, you know, really, really cheap, can't you? So for me, yeah. Omnisense cane was the, was the biggest letdown in terms of cost versus reward. Um, and I think the biggest surprise... It, it's probably the Dakota disc. That's, yeah, that's what you said. I know you kept saying it was like really yeah. shocked at how well it uh, how well it worked. Yeah, it just I I, I I don't know what I expected to be honest. I kind of expected the wheel to be amazing. Um, as soon as I saw the pictures of it online, I thought to myself that wheel 
is going to be brilliant. And it was. And it was. The there was no, yeah, right. There was no surprise. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was great. It was exactly as I imagined it. The only sentence was a lot worse than what I expected. And the disc was far superior. The disc was amazing. It, it just yeah. blew my mind. And I can actually say, since I, uh, many of you may have noticed that in this video, I'm actually with Steve. Uh, because I was actually in England and I can say he actually received his Amputech package when I was there and I got to actually firsthand see his reaction to the quality of the items that he received. Uh, you know, he was genuinely very impressed. We should have filmed that. Yeah, because you were like, you were like very shocked by kind of yeah. just how nice that cane was and everything else, the quality of all well, the We've got a shout out Ambitech, haven't we? Because Ambitech reached out, they sent us that stuff for free. Um, and we've given our honest, you know, unbiased opinion, not just because they sent it us free. This is just our genuine, genuine thoughts and feelings. Right. Yeah. Um, but when I open, on a blow smoke, <laughs> I, yeah, I've never had an Ambitech product before. You've used them for a while, but yep. the cane itself that they sent me, when I opened it, I just thought, ooh, nice. It just felt, you know, good like quality. Is, all yeah, right. Snapped together really well. It was, you know, it was really, really nice. And I was super impressed by the quality. They actually took the time to really go through their website and they have some really unique, like we're talking about how some of these cane tests, what we, we did this episode were very situational and they have a lot more. I know you and I were discussing that we would love to have another episode next season where we go actually crazy with Ambitech stuff and just get all those tips and just have a little fun. We had um we had a good look through the Ambitech uh, website didn't we and um yeah. you were reading we were sat in my kitchen and you were reading out to me all the various different products that they do and it blew my mind some of the stuff that they do which i had no idea about until filming this episode yeah. they have got some really cool stuff so anyone watching this i know it sounds like we're we're proper being uh sponsored here or whatever <laughs> but, but i would genuinely not, recommend yeah. i would recommend going on the ambitech website and just checking out some of the cool stuff that they yeah, do well, we will uh, make sure to put a little um uh link in the description and then uh we don't over there. we don't we don't have a discount code we don't have an affiliate yep. code we are no we're just, way we're just fans you know, being paid yeah. for this it's just we we had the chance to test it we've tested it and we always will be honest around what we like and dislike and things that we could do better like we mentioned with the rover wheel if ambitech ever see this video one thing you need to change is some way of that wheel gripping the shaft of the cane so it can't spin spin is, yeah the, 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 the spinning makes it very that, unpredictable but if that can... was driving mike absolutely yeah. crazy and the other thing i wanted to say mike obviously we've covered uh, our summary of the cane tips and who we thought was the winner um and hopefully people will find this useful um one thing we didn't cover in this episode is how to actually change the various cane tips because that was interesting so tune in next week where we're going to just quickly show you everything you need to know about changing a cane tip. And yeah, also yeah. one other thing we wanted to mention, if there are any other products that you guys would like to see the RP show take out on the road and test and give you the actual honest opinion on are they any good or not, put it in the comments below, let us know. And if we can get older than products or if we can purchase them and they're not too expensive, then um, we'll try and get that in a future episode for you guys. But if that's what you want to see, let us know in the comments and we'll try and make it happen. Well, folks, that'll just about do it for this week. As always, don't forget to hit us up on all of the social media platforms. And if not already, please subscribe to us on YouTube. It really helps us out. Two, one, action. Good evening, gentlemen. Is it a table for two? Oh, yes, please. Is it this table right here? Yes, yes. Brilliant. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Lovely. It's a nice little romantic restaurant for me in the tubes. <laughs> Take Hector! He said quite unsafe. Where's the, where's the waitress? Where's the meal? Waitress! <laughs> we also ordered some shots. <laughs> 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 All right, so good.